Hey guys, what's going on? Sean Kumar here, the Minister of Everything. Today I'm going to kickstart a series that I'm planning on doing on Leica M lenses uh, that pertains to tips, tricks, and basically how to operate them under various conditions, uh, something that's not always easily found on the internet. So I hope you follow me along and let's get started. Part one, here we go. Okay guys, welcome back. So for part one, what we're going to do is go over what a typical Leica M rangefinder lens looks like. Um, now, whether your manufacturer is Voigtlander or Carl Zeiss or Leica, it does not matter. They will all have these distance scales and uh, aperture ring and focus ring and things like that. So the tutorial here applies to anything um, that is designed to fit on a rangefinder. Um, It'll have these depth of field scales, and we're going to go over what they mean, um, just give you a basic overview so you understand. So in future episodes, you're on the same page as me, and as well as everybody else who's watched this first episode as far as what I'm referring to. Okay, so let's get started. So just a quick tour. Um, the front here is the aperture ring, so the white dot denotes what aperture you're on. So 2, 2.8, 4, 5.6, 8, 11... 16. So there's on this particular lens, that's the range of the aperture. Obviously, the focus ring is here. And as you see, when the focus ring moves, so does the scales on it. And now let's go over the scales really quick. And I'm going to go to the far end for just a second. And I'll explain to you why. What you see here is feet and meters. Um, so the yellow or I think they're yellow, maybe they were orange ones. Orange numbers are in feet and the white numbers are in meters. So no matter what system you're on, um, metric or imperial, um, you will have your way um, in terms of understanding how far something is from you. So the focus ring with those distances basically are telling you how far something is away from you. So since this is a range finder and it helps you <laughs> find the distance or the range between you and the subject, which you will do using the viewfinder, and you will align two images, um, which when they come together, will tell you exactly how far you know, you, you are from that particular subject. So that particular subject that's an alignment in your viewfinder, where the two images are aligned, will correspond um, to this number in the center um, that's pointed to, uh, that's referred to by this little triangle here. Um, and that triangle is pointing to 10 feet, so anything at that 10 feet mark will be in focus. Now, here's the cool part about these rangefinder lenses and, and photography in general, is that when you're on F2, you can only have a very narrow range of things in focus. So according to this, F-stop 2, which is the third set of numbers here right against the camera, um, is basically telling you the various f-stops here. Now you see for the f-stop number two, there's only one number, but for all the other f-stops, there are two numbers here. Um, and the reason for that is f-stop two is a very shallow depth of field, and therefore you're going to be isolating whatever it is that you're focusing on. So for example, if I isolated a subject um, at, at, with my f-stop at two, and I, got, I used my viewfinder to focus it, and I realized they're 10 feet from me, according to this arrow, that's all that's going to be in focus and not a whole lot else, not a whole lot else in front or behind it. Now, if you were to go into this mathematically, you'll realize that there is some give, but it's really, really narrow. So it's not even worth mentioning. So first lesson, um, therefore, is that when you're in a very shallow depth of field, i.e. the number for your aperture is really wide open or really small number, you're going to have a very narrow range of focus. In this case, almost none. So whatever subject I focused on at 10 feet away from me, well, that's pretty much it as far as what's going to be in focus in my camera. Now, if you notice, next to the two, there's a four on either side of this. And what that means is that if I were to change my aperture over to four, it now allows me to have a wider range of focus. So what that means is, according to this, these two four here, there's... It's about nine feet. It's pointing at about nine feet. It's between the eight and the 10, so I'm gonna go for nine feet. And then it's between the 10 and the 15, so I'm gonna to go to about 13 feet. 
So everything from 9 to 13 feet are now in focus. So including the subject that I had focused on initially when I had this on too. So now everything in front of my subject as well as behind it will be in focus a little bit. Um, so if my subject is in focus at 10 feet, then everything from 9 feet, so 1 feet in front of the subject, to 3 feet beyond the subject will also be in focus. So while you'll start to lose slowly that bokeh or the out-of-focus background, you'll have much more of a range in focus. And that number only in the amount of things you have in focus will only increase in range as you go to higher numbers. So now let's go to the other extreme. So this goes to F16. What ends up happening is you get a wide range. So for according to this, according to the distance scales and feet, everything from just a little over six feet to everything to 25 feet will be in focus um, if I don't change this this uh, particular focus ring. Um, I still have my subject in focus at 10 feet, but so are things in front and behind that particular subject, So, which is really cool. Now, let's say my subject's no longer at 10 feet. I can move this around to get whatever it is that I want to. So according to this, everything from 15 feet and beyond will be in focus. So you could put your infinity at 16 here, because I'm on F16, infinity. So everything from 8 feet to infinity, as far as the eye or as far as the lens can see, will be in focus. So this is really helpful when you're in a situation where you're in a crowd, where something is of a certain distance from you, there's a wedding party that's a known distance from you. Um, and therefore you want to keep them in focus without having to follow them with the viewfinder, which is really difficult to do. Um, and you might run into the, the wedding cake or something and, and drop the cake while your eye is on this thing. Sorry, it's my attempt at being humorous. Um, but you get the point here. The point here is that the wider or the higher in f-stop you go, the wider range you have for things that are going to be in focus. Now, Generally, on a cloudy day in my backyard, I, I like to um, photograph the squirrel, so I usually keep it about f4. And therefore, you know, when I focus on something, like the squirrels on the on the fence, I have to get bring the focus of the fence into into line. So that f fence is usually about 25 feet from me. So for me, everything from about ooh, let's say 18 feet to about maybe 27, 28 feet will be in focus. So therefore, it gives me a little bit of give in case the squirrel moves back and forth. Then I have that incomplete focus. So for your homework, though, yes, there's homework because this is going to really help you become a better photographer with the Leica M rangefinder camera and lenses, um, is that I want you to go out and focus on different things in your backyards of various distances from you or even inside the house as long as you have good light and you can see things and start focusing on things of various distances from you and get an appreciation for how far it really is from you. Is it 25 feet? Is it 10 feet? So take a guess at how far you are from your bookshelf at any given time and then say, okay, I think that's 10 feet from me and then set your aperture to like four or whatever and see through the viewfinder if you're accurate. If not, focus your lens to wherever that bookshelf is or whatever subject or object you're using and see what that distance is. Because what that's going to help you do is get an understanding of how far things are from you. And that's going to be extremely helpful when we go into part two, part three, part four, and beyond as far as understanding um, distances. Because that'll quickly and rapidly help you set the right focus selection without having to look through the viewfinder when you're in a situation um, like at a wedding or things like that where snap judgment is often needed. So what would then ideally you would do is if you know your subject, you're at F4 and you know your subject's anywhere from 6 to 10 feet from you, you would just put it here. So at F4, 6 to, what is that, about 7 feet? There you go. So maybe not 6 to 10. So 6 to 7 feet from you is about F4. So you will know that if you put it here, they'll most likely be in focus. Um, and as you get better with time, you will start focusing um, to the correct uh, distances from you. So in order to even get there, you need to be able to focus on, on things that you think is a certain distance from you. And so in order to not even use the viewfinder, which I'll show you how to do later, you need to have an understanding for how far things are from you. So practice this, basically take a guess at how far something is from you, and then obviously see, you know, put that in perspective of where you think it is from you. So for example, you think something is six feet from you, put it at six feet 
and look into the viewfinder and see if it's really six feet from you um, and things like that. Obviously, anything beyond 25 feet automatically goes to infinity because that's the where the scales end here. So, you know, um, that's that's completely something different, which I will go into later. But you get the understanding. So please do this homework and I will catch you guys at part two. See you guys next time. Bye bye.